Hello everybody, my name is Kyle with Web Dev Simplified. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all the steps that you need to take in order to create your very first web server using Node.js, so let's get started now. The first thing we need to do is download Node.js from nodejs.org. There's two options as you can see that we can select from, there's the long-term support version and there's the current version. I recommend going for the long-term support version because the current version could have potential bugs in it that make learning difficult if you run into these because you won't be sure if it's your problem or the actual code's problem. So I recommend going with the long-term support version because this is the most tested version and you know it'll have the least amount of bugs. So just click on this and choose where you want to download to, save it, and then follow the different download steps as they come up. It's extremely straightforward. And after you're done with that, then we're going to need to jump into Visual Studio Code in order to get started. Now that we have Node.js downloaded and installed, it's time to talk about what Node.js really is. Node.js is just a way for you to run JavaScript outside of the browser. It can be used to run desktop apps, servers, or really anything else that you want to do with JavaScript. And the thing that we're going to do is actually create a web server using Node.js. So to get started with that, all we need to do is create a JavaScript file inside of our project, and we can just call it whatever we want. In our case, we're just going to call it app.js. And inside of this JavaScript file, we need to create our server and tell it to start listening on a certain port. So the first thing we need to do is we need to require a certain library called HTTP that is going to be used to start the server. So we can just create a variable called HTTP. And to require a library in Node.js, you just type the require keyword followed by the name of the library, which in our case is HTTP. This will include the HTTP library into our code inside of this HTTP variable that we created. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a variable that tells our code what port we're going to be listening to for our server, and we're going to use this later. And then next, we can actually create our server. So to do that, we'll create a server variable here, and we're going to use that HTTP library we just imported and call the create server function on this object. And this create server function takes a single function that has two parameters, which is the request and the response parameters. So we just pass it in a function here with the request and response parameters. And then inside of this function is we're going to handle all of the different activity on our server. So every time someone requests a page on our server, it is going to call this function right here. And we're going to implement this function in a little bit. The next thing we need to do is actually set up our server so it'll listen on the port that we want it to. So now that we have this server object, we can just call server.listen, pass it that port variable that we created to tell it to listen on port 3000. And then this takes a single function that it'll call if there's an error potentially. So as soon as our server starts listening, it'll call this function and it'll either pass an error or nothing if it was successful. So we're gonna check to see if that error exists. And if so, we're just going to log out a message saying that something went wrong. And then we're also going to pass the error along to that log statement so that when we check our logs, we can see what the error was that happened. But if there was no error, then we want to log that our server is listening on port. And we're just going to pass in that port variable we created earlier. So now our server is actually listening. And in order to run our server, all we need to do is type node followed by the name of the file we want to run. And since our terminal is open inside of this project, we can just type node app.js. And if we enter, you see it'll say server is listening on port 3000, which is perfect. But our server doesn't actually do anything because we haven't implemented the function inside of the create server function. So let's end our server by hitting control C. And then let's actually implement this function here. So what we want to do is we want to return some response to the user. And to do that, we use the response object that is passed into this function. So we can say response.write, and we just want to write hello node to every single person that requests something from our server. And then when we want to end our response saying that we've written everything we want to write, we just type response.end. And there we go. That is everything we need to do in order to get our server actually responding to actual request. So if we save that, we call node.app.js inside of our console again. And then if we just open up a browser and we go to localhost 3000, you'll see that we get hello load node being printed out into our browser, which is amazing. But 
We probably want to actually render HTML from our web server rather than plain text, so let's get started doing that now. The first thing we need to do is create an HTML file that we want to render. So let's just create a new file called index.html, and in VS Code, if you just type an exclamation point and hit enter, it'll generate the outline of an HTML document for you, and then inside of the body, we can just put this is HTML so that we know that we're actually rendering HTML here instead of our plain text. Back in our app.js file, we need to change the function here that we're calling with each request to tell it to send HTML instead of this plain text of hello node. So the first thing we need to do is tell the browser that we're going to be writing HTML. To do that, we'll call the write head function, and the first parameter of write head is the status code of this operation, and 200 is a good status code, it means everything went fine. So we're going to use 200, which indicates that everything went okay. And then the next parameter is going to be the different headers that you want to set. And one of those headers is called content type with a hyphen in between content and type. And that is going to be the key of our object. And then the value of that object is going to be what value we want to set to that header. And in our case, we're using text slash HTML. And this just tells the browser that the information that's being sent to it is an HTML document, so it should parse it as HTML. Then we want to read the file index.html that we created earlier, so we need to import another library into our app.js, and this is going to be called fs, and we just require that library just like this, and now we have a variable called fs that has all the file handling that we need to be able to do. So down here in our app.js, we're just going to call the read file function of fs, and this function takes the name of the file we want to read, which is index.html, and then it's going to take a function, which is going to have an error property, if an error happened, and a data argument, which is going to be all the data from inside of that file. And in here, what we want to do is first, we want to check if there's an error, because if there's an error, we want to tell the browser that we couldn't find what we were looking for. So we can say, write head with a status of 404, and 404 just means not found, we couldn't find what you're looking for. So that's how the browser knows that it was unable to find this. And then we can use our write method that we talked about earlier, just to write out some text to the screen. So we can just say file not found, for example. And normally you would want to render a specific file not found page, but in our case, we're just going to be writing some text. And in the case that there was no error, we want to actually just write the data from the file. So we'll say res.write and data, and this data parameter right here is just all the information inside index.html. So we can remove this write, and we want to move our end inside of this callback here for this function, so that way it'll be called after our write here. And now, if we save that and refresh, you'll notice that nothing actually happens, and you're thinking, why is this? I changed all of my code. But that's because you have to restart your server in Node.js every single time you make a change. So if we just end our server, and restart it, and now refresh our page, you'll see that we're getting our HTML rendered right here that we created in our index.html file. And this is perfect. We just set up our very first web server using Node.js, and it was incredibly simple. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Node.js, make sure to check out my next video over here, which is going to be about how to set up payments for a shopping cart that I created in my Introduction to Web Development playlist which is also going to be linked over here. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this and want more similar content. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good day.